Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. Fun fact, did you know that uh, the most popular intro to all YouTube videos is, Hey guys, I, I read that right now and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what I do. So maybe I'll start changing it up. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Hope y'all are doing well. Um, I've gotten some feedback from you guys and uh, I've been trying to improve my audio and uh, some of you have said I need a new mic. It's not the mic. I've been trying to reduce background noise because I live on a busy street. I got someone watching TV. I got my fan blowing right here. I got my com old computer fan blowing like crazy. So there's a lot of noise and I wanted to try to reduce the background noise. And in doing that, I applied a noise gate filter in production and it uh, apparently didn't work how I planned because there was uh, it, it just didn't sound as good as I thought it would have. Um, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, but it, uh, I'm getting feedback from people that it was disruptive. So I've removed that for this video and we'll see how it goes. So uh, what we're talking about today, we're talking about a new, not a new, we're talking about a closed end income fund. And uh, I want to specify that income fund. And we're going to talk about um, an Eaton, Eaton Vance fund that's tax advantaged and where you should, where in my opinion, these types of funds should be held. So we'll go over it, do a quick overview and see what it does and all that good stuff. So if you're new here, please like, share, subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. Down below in a pinned comment is all the affiliate links and all that stuff. I've had some people use the Ko-Fi link that sent me uh, some tips. I really appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Um, so, you know, M1 Finance is down there. Amazon link is down there. All that. So you guys that are using it, I really appreciate it. No pressure. Don't, you don't, you know, you need to. Watching, sharing, liking, commenting. All that is very much appreciated. So let's get into it. Um, first thing we're going to look at, we're going to just do an overview here on CEF Connect. Uh, this is the closed end fund site um, uh, that I, I frequent and it gives you a lot of good information. And what we're talking about today is ticker, sim ticker symbol ETV. And that's the Eaton Vance Tax Managed Buy Right Opportunity Fund is what it's called. And if those of you that are not familiar with closed end funds, closed end funds are similar to mutual funds, except that uh, they're limited in shares. So in a mutual fund, everybody can buy in and they'll just keep creating shares, creating shares, creating shares. In a closed end fund, it's closed. So it's a lot harder for the fund to create shares. Um, they can create shares. As a matter of fact, there was a fund called BST that I did a video on. I think I did a video on BST. But anyway, um, they are having a rights offering. Now, a rights offering, uh, you know, these funds have board of directors and they can approve a rights offering that will increase um, assets into the fund. Um, but that's kind of rare. Um, so closed end funds, they're, they're priced more like supply and demand. Okay. So there's, there's what they call uh, the share price, right? That's what you'll pay for it. And then there's the NAV or the net asset value. And you'll see that right here, the net asset value and then the share price. So those are two different numbers, two different values that you need to pay attention to when dealing with closed end funds. Now, so since they're disconnected because um, the shares are traded between shareholders, right? And in the supply and demand uh, situation. So it's whatever you're willing to pay for it. Uh, if I'm willing to sell it, you can buy it. If I'm willing to buy it, you can sell it, etc., etc. But what that does is it creates a disconnect from the actual funds and the value of what's inside the fund. So that will trade totally different than from what the share price is. I hope that makes sense. And I'm trying to explain it a little bit more here. So if we look at right here, the share price of ETV today, this is uh, Friday, June 11th. Uh, is $16.35 a share. 
The net asset value, though, that's all the, the, the value of the fund, of the, the value of the fund, of what it holds, is only $15.50. So closed end funds trade at either more than the net asset value or less than the net asset value, depending upon the shareholders and supply and demand. So currently you would be, if you're buying today, you're paying 5.48% more than the asset value of the fund. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes it's worth it to get into a fund. Um, if they're outperforming or if they're, um, or if they keep your money protected a little bit better than the next guy. So you're buying into the management of this. So, uh, what's good about CEF connect is they show you the averages, the lows, the highs, and the average. So we'll look at the 52 week average and it's, it averages in the past year a four and a half percent premium so what that tells you is that it typically in the past year will trade at a premium so it's not unusual that it's trading at 5.48 percent more than its net asset value um, at its peak its 52 week high it traded as much as 9.38 percent higher than its net asset value and then at its low in the past year, it's traded pretty much on par with fair value at a 0.52% uh, premium. So this is what you want to watch here. If you're wanting to get into a fund, it's always best, of course, to buy in cheaper, right? So you don't want to buy in when it's 9% overvalued from the assets of the fund. You would want to buy at, uh, you know, at the average at least, or if you can get better than average, even better right so that is how closed end funds pricing works now this one in particular is the eaton vance tax managed by right it does have a eight percent distribution rate paid monthly at 11.08 cents uh, per share which is not bad um, we'll look at the distributions here and we'll look at since inception and most all funds had a bad year after the 08 uh, recession um you know they did a little bit this actually isn't a cut i don't believe um this one was uh, but this is just from them going to monthly so they haven't had a cut since 2009 basically um, and it's paid consistent every month since then and we'll go down here and we'll look at uh, what the distribution is. This is the tax advantage. Actually, let's go to the fund basics and we'll the fund basics and we'll talk about what it is. Um, yeah, we'll just do it from here. Nah, we'll do it from here. This is more detailed. Uh, the fund will normally invest at least eighty percent of its assets in a diversified portfolio of common stocks, seeking to exceed the total return performance of the S and P five hundred and the Nasdaq one hundred. Now. When, when I see that, I go, I go, yeah, right. And it's actually, they probably won't. They just, they just seek to do it. That's why it says seeking to exceed. They probably will never do it, to be honest with you, especially paying out an 8% uh, distribution every month. Well, 8% annual distribution paid out every month. They probably won't do it. And, you know, they don't. <laughs> But this is an income fund, and it's tax managed. So we'll talk a little bit about that too. So initially, see, you're probably hearing that out there. <laughs> initially, segment one, the S&P 500, is expected to represent approximately 55 to 65 percent of the portfolio value, and segment two, the Nasdaq 100, approximately 35 to 45. Over time, the percentages may vary. Stock holdings may include stocks not included in either index, but the investments are primarily made, primarily made in common stocks of U.S. issuers. The fund intends to sell index options that qualify for treatment as Section 1256 contracts on which capital gains and losses are generally treated as 60% long-term and 40% short-term, regardless of holding period. 
option strategies of, of selling index call options on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 will be employed. Up to 10% of its assets may be invested in securities of non-US issuers, including up to 5% of issuers located in emerging markets. So they sell call options on indexes, not on the stocks. So they're trying to create income. Now, what they also can do, the t part of the tax managed thing is they can offset some losses for the gains. So if they had losses the prior year, they can take gains today offset by those losses and then they can classify their distribution to you as return of capital. That's why you'll see right here, return of capital, 10 cents, 9 cents. The majority of their distributions recently have been return of capital and return of capital is a uh, distribution classified as tax free to the shareholder so that's important and one thing you want to look at when you're looking at return of capital and you're looking at these funds is to look at their net asset value okay this is key so we'll go back to overview and we'll look we'll see uh, you know We'll look back five years. What is that? 2016. They paid, you know, the distribution monthly, never stop, nothing, right? And so, what is that? 11 times 12, that's like a dollar 30, roughly. Um, so, you go to look at the net asset value, and we'll look at it for the one year, right? Um, that they paid the dollar 30. And what you want to pay attention to is the net asset value. So are they earning their distribution, right? So you look here and on June of 2020, the net asset value was just under $13. And if you look over here uh, up to today, the net asset value, $15.50. So in that one year, they paid you $1.30 in distributions but they also grew their net asset value from $13 to 1550. So they went up $2.50 and paid you $1.30. So they are out earning their distribution. That's what you want to see. That's what when you see return of capital, it's not always bad. Now, if for instance, uh, the net asset value went from $15 to $13 the other way, and they paid you a dollar thirty in return of capital that's not good okay and we'll look we'll go back five years and we'll see the net asset value you know five years ago was just under fourteen dollars and today it's fifteen fifty and all those five years they paid you a dollar thirty so what is that uh five six dollars and fifty cents in distributions throughout that time period and the net asset value rose from fourteen dollars to fifteen fifty so they are managing their fund very well that's what i wanted to get out there um that, well, that was the main point of this video not necessarily the fund because it is trading at a premium i would say put this on your watch list and and if it ever comes into a buy and you want a good eight percent yielding fund that pays you monthly i think this one's a good one now what else did i want to look at we'll look at portfolio characteristics we'll look at the top 10 real quick it does have 167 holdings they're only turning over their, over their portfolio this is only as of uh, december 2020 though uh nine percent so they're not going to get a lot of turnover in their uh their buying and selling of stocks so they're probably getting most of their stuff from options but they're probably selling some things at losses to offset the gains that's how it's tax managed so we'll look top top uh 10 apple with 8.76 percent of the fund big holdings in apple and microsoft and amazon facebook alphabet pretty much the s p um Tesla, Comcast, Texas Instruments, Intuitive Surgical, uh, making up a big chunk of this fund. Now, this fund, well, 
does have 1.4 billion dollars in assets so it's not a small fund which is good uh, has 91 million shares outstanding um, it has an expense ratio of 1.09 yes 1.09 that's net of the distribution by the way so not only did they pay eight percent roughly uh, distribution throughout the years they've done it with a with taking a one percent management fee as well so one thing you will also want to look out for with closed-end funds is leverage so a lot of times these funds will deploy leverage or loans they'll borrow money and they'll try to boost returns with borrowed money uh, that is sometimes that could be a double-edged sword right in a in an up market leverage is great in a down market leverage is bad um, for the most part but this fund employs no leverage whatsoever um, so you're not going to have the huge swings in pricing if we have a market i mean it's going to participate in market downturn but with leverage it will participate even more so uh we'll talk about real quick is the taxes where do you want this held um i'll leave a link down to this this is a eaton vance website as well it's the parametric investment tax calculator you can use this this is kind of basic um, but it says what tax rate applies to your ordinary investment income you can punch in your numbers i put in sixty thousand married filing jointly in california i get a total tax rate of 16 percent but what I wanted to talk about was where you would put these uh, funds that pay return of capital, right? Uh, like QILD, NUC, all these pay return of capital distributions, right? There's a couple places. Everybody talks about retirement accounts. In my opinion, and you know what they say about opinions, everybody has one, right? Um, these do not belong in a retirement account. As long as they are paying return of capital distributions, they belong in a taxable account because they're, they're tax free. OK, so we'll just peep your eyes over here on the this section right here. Withdrawals from retirement accounts. So if you were to hold this in a Roth IRA, that's fine. But you're putting in after tax dollars into a Roth IRA. You're buying this fund and the income that this fund throws off is already tax free so you're not protecting any taxes whatsoever in the roth so it's going to come out tax free but it's going in tax free if that makes sense hope that makes sense so you're not getting you're not getting any advantage of the return of capital it's actually shielded because it's in the roth the worst thing you can do is put this in a traditional IRA or a traditional 401k. Now, when you buy, get off of there. When you, in a traditional IRA, traditional 401k, you put in pre-tax dollars. So you're buying this uh, pre-tax and you're putting it in the IRA but this fund is paying out return of capital that's tax free but when you pull it out of the ira or the 401k you're taxed on it so you're actually getting boned <laughs> i couldn't think of a better word sorry you're getting screwed here uh, by putting it in a traditional ira because you're going to pay income on something that wasn't supposed to be taxed at all right if if it's paying return of capital i hope that makes sense so you know in a roth it's 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 a wash uh in a traditional ira or traditional 401k it's it's pretty bad to have these return of capital products in there okay so that's uh we'll go to the eaton vance or the etf channel thing here we'll look at the performance of it um i wanted to probably look at the performance of this versus qild because that's kind of that's kind of the most popular one, right? So we'll look at it. And it's the most long-standing one. I mean, there's Nusi, there's Jeppy, um, you know, all these other ones. But they haven't been around very long. QILD has been around the longest as far as an income fund is concerned. Um, so we'll check out its performance from them. So we're going to go back. I think QILD is from 2013 or so. And this is going to chart 10,000 invested. 
and we'll just click on that bring that over here and we'll see uh, starting December 12 2013 up to June 10th 2021 ETV had a total return of 136 percent whereas QYLD had a total return of 79.5 so um, like I said I like the ETV I like the tax advantaged uh, portion if that's important to you um, keep this on your radar it's, a lot, it's selling at a premium now but if we have a pullback and it gets down to fair value or at a discount preferably because you can buy these things at a discount as well um, you know depending upon supply and demand again so if you can get this you know at a five percent discount to the net asset value uh, historically that's going to be a great buy so keep that on your watch list um, if you have some funds that are paying return of capital, keep them out of your traditional IRAs and your traditional 401ks. Think twice about putting them in your Roth IRAs and, um, and Roth 401ks. And um, that's it. That's it. That's ETV, the Eaton Vance. I'll leave links down below to everything we talked about here, the tax calculator, all that good stuff. Um, if you have any questions, be sure, leave it down below, like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. You guys have a great week and we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye-bye. I am not a financial advisor. The information contained in this video is for entertainment and informational purposes only. It is not intended to be investment advice. Please seek a licensed professional for any investment, tax, or legal advice. Thank you. Thank you.